Hi everybody, it's Doug Keating. Welcome to my fifth practice video. In this video, I'm going to share the highlights of the summer trip the boys and I took in 2016. We headed back to Germany, but to a different region, Baden-Württemberg. Now you may be asking yourself, where in the world is Baden-Württemberg? And more importantly, where in Germany is Baden-Württemberg? Many of you have probably never heard of this region. Don't worry, it's not well known. If you look at the bottom half of the chart, in the lower left corner, I'm providing a map that shows where Baden-Württemberg is. It's in the southwest corner of Germany, right next to its big brother, Bavaria. In the middle is the region's flag, and in the lower right corner may be the most relevant point of context for some of you, and that is Black Forest Cherry Cake. If you've sampled Black Forest Cherry Cake, then you've eaten cuisine from this area. Congratulations, excellent choice. Here is the agenda we followed. We spent 11 days in August on this vacation. It ended up being just Riley and me. Gavin decided not to go on the trip. He wanted to spend his senior summer with his friends, or more specifically, his girlfriend. If there's any teenager watching this video, please pay attention. If a family member offers to take you to Europe, all expenses paid, the correct answer is yes. Always yes. Bad decision by Gavin, but I digress. We did not take any major deviations from our planned agenda. We saw Würzburg, Heilbrunn, Stuttgart, Tübingen, Stauffen, Colmar, Strasbourg, and ended our journey in Heidelberg. We were able to spend multiple nights in some of the major cities, which really helped make the trip flow easier. Riley and I started our adventure in Würzburg. Now I know some of you detail-oriented travelers may be watching this video saying to yourself, Würzburg is not really in Baden-Württemberg, and you are correct, but Würzburg is a great small German city. I've been there many times. In fact, I lived nearby many years ago. It's a little over an hour, maybe an hour and a half from Frankfurt, so it's an easy drive, and there's a lot to see and do once you get there. If you look at the photo on the left, Riley is standing in the city square. If you look more closely, you may notice a maypole. Maypoles are a German tradition very popular in this part of Germany. They put the pole in the town square on May Day, which I think is the 1st of May. You plant the pole and then throw a big party, which includes a lot of drinking and dancing. You gotta love Germans and their funky traditions. On the right is a picture of Riley and I standing in the garden behind the Bishop's Palace, which is probably the best known landmark in Würzburg. I hadn't actually toured the Bishop's Palace before. It was really nice, much better than I expected. The bishop definitely had it going on when he built this place. Not too shabby for a holy man. We spent the next day in Würzburg. For this trip, I thought it might be useful to spend a few days at the first stop so we could get over our jet lag. That solution definitely worked well. If you look at the pictures, both of them are from Marienburg, the fortress that sits on the hill overlooking the city of Würzburg. Now I have to admit, you gotta walk up a lot of stairs to get to the top but the views are definitely worth it. One theme you're going to hear from this trip is climbing stairs in fortresses, castles, churches, and steeples. You name it, and we climbed it. Würzburg was a great place to start our trip. We were well rested and ready for more. Time to head for Baden-Württemberg. The next day, we jumped on the Autobahn and drove south towards Stuttgart. Heilbronn is on the way, so we decided to stop there. I'd heard from some friends that it was well worth a visit. My friends lied. Heilbrunn was actually pretty boring. I was quite disappointed. On the left, you see a picture of me and Riley standing in front of the Rod House, which was about the most exciting thing to see. On the way back to the Audubon, we stumbled upon a nice surprise, a small castle up on a hill with nice views. We decided to stop there and ponder our situation over coffee. We asked ourselves, was Heilbrunn worth visiting again? And of course the answer was no. Get back in the car and drive to Stuttgart. Things will be much better once we get there. They certainly did. I'll take a moment here to talk a little about the food. In this picture, you see a typical dish from this region of Germany. You see meat in the middle, covered, or I should probably say smothered in sauce, some fresh vegetables, and then knödel. Knödel are dumplings. I'm a big fan of them. They're kind of heavy with a sticky texture, so some people don't care much for them. Let's take a look at another common dish. Here we've got pork in the middle. Yes, you see a lot of pork in Germany. Some sauerkraut on the right. And then once again, knödel on the left. 
delicious. Back to our adventure. The next day we spent in Stuttgart, which is probably the best known city in Baden-Württemberg. It's well known because there's definitely a lot to see and do in this city. There are many historic buildings, as well as a beautiful city center. You can see Riley in the upper right-hand corner, standing in the city center. One thing that happened while we were in Stuttgart is we had some bad weather, lots of rain. The good news is that there's several museums to visit in Stuttgart. We went to visit a modern art museum. Now, modern art is usually not my favorite, but in this case, we actually had a good time. Travel is fun. I thought I'd give two examples of fun from Stuttgart. The photo on the left is a bathroom door, and if you look, you can see it has a porthole. Yep, a porthole. As you walk up to the door, you can actually see into the bathroom. I would love to say there were stalls, but actually the urinals were just on the other side of the door. You definitely could see everything that was going on. Kind of funny, but kind of strange at the same time. Hey, what are you guys doing in there? Oh, European. Get it? European. On the right is me wearing a lovely German soccer fan hat that we found in the local soccer store. I decided not to buy it, despite the fact that it fit well. Stuttgart was fun, and it also had several wonderful places to eat and drink. We found an upscale coffee shop that was really, really good. You can see here we had a Milch Café, or coffee with foam milk, along with an excellent piece of German Käsekuchen, or cheesecake. On the right, you can see a picture of my favorite German dish, Schweinhaxen and Knödel. Schweinhaxen is pig's knuckle, and yes, that is a knife sticking out of the side of it. You definitely need the knife when eating this dish. The next day, we got in a car and drove at Audubon speed towards the Black Forest. Along the way, we decided to stop in the university town of Tübingen. I'd heard good things about it and was pleasantly surprised. Tübingen is a great place to visit. There's a castle up on a hill overlooking the town itself with some fine museums. On the right, you see a photo of Riley with the town in the background. There's a river that runs through the old part of the city, and there's a tree-lined footpath to see this historic buildings. Next on the agenda, we visited Hohenzollern Castle. Now, Hohenzollern Castle is not as well known as Neuschweinstein, but it's similar. It sits up on a hill with grand views overlooking the area. It's a great place to visit because they actually let you tour most of the castle. One thing I have to warn you, though, Riley and I made a mistake. We decided to take the German tour rather than wait for the English tour, which was later in the afternoon. German tours are challenging. I speak some German, and I could barely follow it. I'm pretty sure Riley didn't have a single clue on what they were talking about as we took the tour. Anyway, we were able to tour the whole castle and got a good sense of what life was like there. A great place to visit if you're in this area. We started our journey in the Black Forest area by staying in the town of Stalthen. This was a nostalgic choice for me. Many years ago, I stayed there with some friends. Oddly enough, Riley and I actually stayed in the exact same hotel, the guest house from Hirschen. Riley's pictured standing in front of it on the left. It's run by a lovely family who still owns it to this day. One thing I forgot about Stalthen is that it's tiny. And when I say tiny, I mean tiny. There's not a whole lot to see and do. On the right, you see Riley pictured standing in the town square. Stalfin was a decent place to stay, mainly for nostalgic reasons, but I don't think I'd ever go back. Instead, I would stay in Freiburg, the city I'll talk about next. Freiburg is the largest city in this region. It has a large university and a nice city center. At this point in the trip, I started to notice that we were visiting a lot of cities with universities. That wasn't really planned. I've been to Freiburg multiple times. It was a lot better than I remembered. There's several historic buildings located around the city center. On the left, you see Riley standing in front of one of them. It also has a large church with a tall steeple. We climbed to the top of the steeple. I already mentioned that you need to be in decent shape to climb all of these spiral staircases. Freiburg steeple is another example. Tough climb, but well worth it to take photos. On the right side of the slide, you see one example. We did the obligatory drive through the Black Forest. You'll notice that I don't have any pictures of the Black Forest because that's all it is, a forest full of trees. Not really that exciting, especially if you've ever been in a forest. We did stumble upon a pleasant surprise, though. 
the town of Gengenbach, a small village in the Black Forest. It's full of half-timbered houses and a nice pedestrian zone. On the left, you can see we stopped at the coffee shop to enjoy some coffee and cake. Afternoon coffee and cake became somewhat of a regular ritual for us on the trip. On the right, you can see Riley standing in front of one of the houses in Gengenbach. It's an oddly shaped, really small, kind of funky little house. I'm pretty sure the Keebler elves live here. Another thing worth mentioning during our drive from the Black Forest is that we would be driving in the middle of nowhere and would pass these older German women on bicycles like they'd just come from the bakery. The reality was we were in the middle of nowhere. I call these women Rodfraus. Fascinating because we would ask ourselves, where did they come from and where are they going? No sensible person would be riding that one speed bike through the Black Forest. After finishing our drive in the Black Forest, we crossed the Rhine River and headed into France, more specifically the Alsace region, which is actually quite similar to Germany. We decided to stay in Eggelsheim, which is a lovely little wine village that I've stayed in several times before. You see two pictures of Riley. On the left, he's in the town square with a fountain and church behind him. On the right, he's standing in front of another one of those funky little houses. This one is actually showing the side profile so you get a sense of just how skinny the house is. Eggersheim is full of skinny alleyways, colorful flowers, and half-timbered houses. It's a really nice place to visit, although I will have to admit it was packed full of tourists. We were traveling in August, which means vacation time for many Europeans. One thing we talked about after the trip is that if we had to decide all over, we would not stay in Eggersheim. It's simply just too popular. We would probably stay in one of the other wine villages in the Alsace region, or in Colmar itself, which I'll talk about next. We spent the next day in Colmar, which is one of my favorite cities in all of France. I've been there many times and have always enjoyed the visit. It's full of all kinds of things to see and do. On the left, you see Riley standing on a typical street within Colmar. You can see the half-timbered houses covered with flower boxes. On the right, you see the two of us standing in front of the Tanner's house, which is in the historic party of the old city. There's several churches and multiple museums in Colmar. It's just a great place to spend a day and really get a feel for what Alsace is all about. The next day, we spent some time driving the Alsace wine route. This wine route is a string of small villages, each that grow and produce their own wine, usually white. The enticing part is that every village is unique, but at the same time, they all start to look alike. On the left, you see Riley and I standing in Kaisersburg, which is one of the better places to visit, in my humble opinion. On the right, we're in Requivere or maybe Rubeville. I actually don't recall exactly which one. It doesn't really matter because, like I said, they all start to look alike after a while. We did learn an important lesson during the drive. It was Saturday, which meant there were many tourist buses on the route along with day trippers. Actually, in a few places, we couldn't even find a parking spot. The reality is that many Germans will drive into France to fill their trunks full of wine and then return to Germany with their supply for the rest of the year. If you're traveling the wine route and it is a weekend, I will caution you, you will not be alone. One place we did stop at along the wine route worth mentioning that I actually had never visited before is the Königsberg Fortress. It's high on a hill overlooking the valley that the wine is found in. It's a great place to visit. I'm really glad we stopped, even though getting there is quite an experience. You kind of drive up a goat trail to get to the top of the hill. On the left, you can see a picture of the fortress taken from the inside. This gives you a little sense of how high up it is. On the right is a picture of Riley. Once again, he's standing inside the fortress complex. If you look behind him, you may notice there's a replica of the fortress itself. This place takes some time to get to, but it's worth the drive, in case you are in this area. The tour they provide showcases almost the entire fortress itself, which gives you a good sense of what life would have been like several hundred years ago in this area. We finished our time in the Alsace region by visiting the city of Strasbourg, which is the largest city in this region. Here you can see some pictures of Riley and me. On the left, Riley is standing in a part of Strasbourg called Petite France, or Little France. It includes a canal system that runs through a bunch of half-timbered houses. 
On the right, we're sitting in the main city square that is located right next to the cathedral, which I will talk about next. If there's one thing Strasbourg is known for, it's the cathedral. It is huge. You can see it from miles away. In fact, look at the picture on the left. We can't even fit the entire steeple in the picture frame. That's how tall and how high up it goes. Well, we climbed up to the top of the steeple as you would expect. It's well worth the climb, although I will warn you, once again, lots and lots of stairs. No elevator and this one will definitely take your breath away. You can take great photos once you're on the top of the city skyline and the surrounding area. This did also offer the opportunity for Riley to make fun of his dad. As you would expect, a teenage boy can definitely get up the stairs with a lot less huffing and puffing than his father. Although this dad did hold his own and did not embarrass his army ranger heritage. Let's talk a little bit more about the food. I mentioned that Alsace is very similar or has a lot of things in common with Germany. Let's compare some food. On the left is German food from the Black Forest region. Yes, that is a burst wrapped in bacon because you need more pork with your pork. On the right is a local dish from Alsace. It's called the farmer's plate and it includes sausage, potatoes, bacon, and sauerkraut. So what's the difference between the left and the right? The left is Germany and the right is France, but the food is pretty much exactly the same. Two common cultures simply separated by a river. After finishing in Alsace, we returned to Germany to finish our trip in the city of Heidelberg. Heidelberg's a well-known city not that far from Frankfurt. It's probably most famous for its castle, which sits up on the hill overlooking the city. On the top of this chart, you can see the panoramic view from the castle looking down on the city. In the lower left corner is Riley standing in the courtyard of the castle. In the lower right corner, you see Riley near an old city gate. In this photo, you can see him, the teenager, doing what teenagers do best while on vacation, and that is mooching the Wi-Fi from a local cafe so that Riley can post and check his social media feeds. I'll confess I do the same thing, especially when on vacation. I post photos so that grandparents can see how the travel is going. One thing I definitely need to highlight from our time in Heidelberg was the hotel we stayed in. It was awesome. I had a booking.com moment. It's called the Hotel Zoom Ritter. It's located right off the old pedestrian zone. On the left, you see Riley eating breakfast at the hotel. And on the right, he's standing in front of it. It's one of the oldest buildings in all of Heidelberg. If that doesn't convince you that this is a truly awesome place to stay, this is the view when you walk out of our hotel, right in the middle of the action. The other really nice surprise was the price. Not too bad. Let's finish up the video talking about some fun we had in Heidelberg. It is a university town and there are several places to go to have a good time. On the left, you see Riley in the student prison, which at one point really was a prison, but it kind of evolved in what I would describe as the sober house the university would use to house drunk students in so that they could sober up for the next day's classes. On the right, you can see me enjoying a fine German beverage in the Red Ox Tavern, which is one of the oldest guest houses slash bars in all of Heidelberg. When you go in, there's pictures, photos, and memorabilia from probably several hundred years of a university watering hole. There you have it. That's the highlights from our 2016 summer vacation to Baden-Württemberg. I also shared a few lessons learned. We had a great time, learned a lot, and really were able to experience this region for all that it has to offer. I hope you found this video useful. I appreciate you watching it. Feel free to provide your thoughts, comments, or feedback. Scroll down below and let me know what you think. Thanks.